to begin, we're going to review some pretty easy subtraction problems that involve um, complementary numbers. All of these numbers subtract from 10. 10 minus 1 is 9, because 1 plus 9 make 10. 10 minus 2 is 8, 10 minus 3 is 7, 10 minus 4 is 6, and 10 minus 5 is 5. We could also flip some of these problems around and say, well, 10 minus 9 equals 1, 10 minus 2 equals 8, 10 minus 3 equals 7, and 10 minus 4 equals 6. These are sort of the basic problems that you need to know in order to do some more, more difficult problems with larger numbers. So now let's try some slightly harder problems that have larger numbers to begin with. But these numbers are still going to be multiples of 10, so they're going to be pretty easy. Let's try 30 minus 1. Well, I know the answer is going to be 20-something, and I know that it's going to be 29 because 1 plus 9 makes 10, and 29 plus 1 makes 30. Let's try 60 minus 2. Well, I know the answer has to be 50-something, and it has to be 58 because 8 plus 2 would make the group of 10. Let's try 70 minus 3. Well, it's got to be 60-something. In fact, it has to be 67 because 7 is the complement of 3. So you can see I could pick any multiple of 10 and subtract a single digit number from it and use the complementary number to help me figure out the answer. Let's try one more. Let's try 90 minus 4. Well, I know the answer has to be 80-something, and in fact, it has to be 86 because 6 is the complement of 4. Okay, now let's take it one more step. Let's try 32 minus 5. Ooh, that's a little harder because this is not a nice round number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 32 and I'm going to bring it to a nice round number, to 30. And by doing that, what I've done is I've subtracted 2. Now I have to subtract 3 more because what I'm trying to subtract in all is 5. So I, if I subtract 2 and then I subtract 3, I'll get a total of 5 that I'm subtracting. And 30 minus 3, that's one of those easy problems that we just did. So I know the answer has to be 20 something, and it's got to be 27 because 7 is the complement of 3. Let's try another example. Let's do 71 minus 6. Again, I don't have a nice round number here, so what I'd like to do is to subtract a nice round number. So I'm going to take 71 and bring it down to 70 by subtracting 1. To subtract a total of 6, I need to subtract 5 more because minus 1, minus 5, that's what gives me the minus 6 altogether. Well, 70 minus 5 is one of those easy problems. I know it's going to be 60-something, and it's going to be 65 because 5 is the complement of 5. This is a great strategy to use when you're subtracting a small number from a larger number. And um, what, you, what you end up doing is you break the problem up into two smaller problems. Um, that are easier to do because you break the problem up over a group of 10. So I hope you try using this strategy whenever you have a large number, a two-digit number, minus a single-digit number. It, it can come in really handy.